And so one of the reasons AI is so hot right now is because it can be a force multiplier. Is it worth buying a more expensive GPU in order to be able to run AI? Some people think so. This is the X1 AI from Mini's Forum. And this is a, a Ryzen APU. This is a little different. This is a Ryzen 9 X, uh, I'm sorry, the X1 Pro 370, which is the AI9 HX370. It's a mouthful. It's a mouthful of a model from AMD. But because this is a GPU, an AI NPU, and a processor all in one piece of silicon that uses regular old DDR5 memory, you can put a lot of memory in these, 96 gigs, and you can run an AI model with that. And so these APUs are finding other uses other than being cool little mini computers. So let's take a look at the cool little mini computer, but also let's take a look at those AI functions, because being able to run your own personal AI assistant on something like this, DeepSeek running on this, 70 billion parameters, maybe. Let's take a look. Oh, he's already got his screwdriver to take it apart. Yeah, I wasn't aware that you could use DDR5 SODIMs with the mobile processors. Every other mini PC we've taken a look at that has Zen 5 doesn't have, it's the RAM is soldered. Ooh, it's, that's hefty. All right, so on the front, we've got USB 4, two super speed type A ports, a combination headphone microphone port, a fingerprint sensor, got a co-pilot button and a power button. A micro SD card reader on the side. That's handy. Has a built-in power brick, dual two and a half gig LAN, HDMI display port, USB 4, OcuLink. Ooh, OcuLink. We can add four lanes of PCIe Gen 4 external connectivity, USB, and a Kensington lock. Also really like that this model does not block the screws with rubber feet. Like the rubber feet are separate, so you can take this apart a lot. Also in the box, you get an HDMI cable, a power brick, a stand, and a Visa mount. Oh, we're gonna use that for sure. You've also got some extra M.2 mounting hardware. This is a, a heat sink and some little rubber bands for the heat sink. Nice. You do have one hidden screw underneath the one rubber bumper. But there you go. So internally, there's a lot to like. You got a standard CR2032 CMOS battery. Sometimes when these go dead, it prevents the machine from turning on. So like if you have one of these that just mysteriously stops working, try replacing the CMOS battery. That basically goes true for any modern machine. It's wild. When the CMOS battery's dead, it just won't turn on. Yeah, it's, it's weird, huh? You get two unused 2280 M.2 ports. And here's your removable DDR5. Now the configuration I got was 64 gigs. We're gonna bump that up to 96 gigs. Now let's get our machine set up. Software configured, we're gonna be using LM Studio. And hope that the Rockham support is fully baked at this point in 2025. Big hope. And while we're on our BIOS tour, there's a couple things I'll call out. One of the most exciting features here is HDMI CEC. I think this is the first time Minisform has incorporated full functionality for HDMI CEC. I usually call this out on Intel NUX because they're one of the first and only NUX to properly do this. HDMI CEC is basically, you hook this thing up to a TV, it can turn the TV on and off through the HDMI CEC standard. So guess what? Yeah, it works on this. It can put the display to sleep, can wake it up. You can also configure in BIOS which sleep modes you want to do that, which is amazing. That's even more flexibility than you get on an Intel NUC, which is fantastic. As for the rest of the BIOS, it's pretty much all the standard features you'd expect, including full control of the Oculink port via the GUI. So you can disable that if you, if you need to for troubleshooting or whatever without actually having to unplug the wire because remember those Oculink connectors, they're not rated for tens of thousands of insertions. I'll just throw this out there. Mini's Forum has an amazing Oculink accessory, the MGA-1. Now this is more expensive than DIYing it yourself, throwing in a graphics card via Oculink, but this is all self-contained. You plug in your Oculink cable and then boom, you've got a 7600M GPU running right off of the X1 AI. Plug and play, perfect. Perfect solution. Check out the video that we did on the MGA1. Uh, it works with basically any Oculink setup. You can even use it on Oculink server motherboards if you're a crazy person. So what do you get that's different with this chunker of a mini PC? Well, the scores are in, and the scores are pretty good. First up with Geekbench 6. 
So 28, 93, and 14, 6, 23. This is a really good score. It's a better score than, say, a Core i9, 11, 900K from just a few years ago. It's 12 cores, 24 threads. Now you've got four of the full fat Zen 5 cores, and then you've got eight Zen 5C cores. Now this is a mobile CPU, keep in mind, or this is meant to be a mobile CPU, but we're running it unchained. So we've got a really good single core score and a really good multi-core score. Geekbench reports a maximum we're in the four and a half gig range for the maximum CPU boost. Not too bad. And remember, I've upgraded this thing from 64 to 96 gigabytes of memory, just so we can run some AI tests in, in a minute. But overall, the performance here is really solid, like shockingly good. If you're thinking about using this as a Linux platform for uh, you know, home server or something like that, it will work great. This platform supports Linux quite well. However, just keep in mind that you've got four of the fast cores and eight of the low power cores. So even though this is 12 Zen 5 cores, some of the high performance, higher TDP Zen 4 8 cores can outperform this, especially in some of those home server scenarios. Now for a productivity machine or something that you're using interactively, you'd be hard pressed to beat this configuration with you know, 8 plus 4. If you check out Task Manager also, you'll notice we've got NPU0. This is the Neural Processing Unit. Now, normally the Neural Processing Unit is really just something that is for laptops. It's, it's, a, it's a thing that does computation like a GPU, but it's, it's a subset of the computations that a GPU does, but it does it much more uh, power efficiently than a GPU can do, which makes sense in a mobile machine. It doesn't necessarily make sense in a platform like this. There's not really a lot that will take advantage of that. Theoretically, Copilot, and look, there's a Copilot button on the front of this, can theoretically take advantage of that. And this thing has a good built-in stereo microphone. In fact, if you want a little preview of how the microphone sounds, that's in this OBS broadcast, which is uh, maybe actually even, I'm a little bit loud because I'm yelling at it, but there you go. The built-in SSD is a Kingston OM8PG4-1024Q. That's one terabyte. It is PCIe Gen 4, so you can get up to 8 gigabytes per second in a burst. Our crystal disk mark numbers uh, show a much more reasonable, you know, 4.5 gigabytes per second read, 3.8 gigabytes per second write. Mixed workloads, it actually holds up pretty well. This is a productivity drive. This is not going to set the world on fire with performance. You can upgrade it. Keep in mind you got two more 2280 slots, but... This is okay for a productivity drive, and it's one terabyte. Now, one of the things that I wanted to do to get as much AI performance out of this as possible was to juice the memory as much as possible, not just in terms of capacity, 96 gigabytes, but also I was hoping for a little bit better on the latency. This is running at DDR5 5600. Out of the box, this came configured for DDR5 5200, but I didn't have any stability issues whatsoever going into the BIOS and configuring it to run at DDR5 5600. However, I was surprised that the latency is still on the order of 110 nanoseconds. Usually, even on mini form machines, if you go in, in the BIOS and you tweak things, you can usually get it around 85, 90 nanoseconds, something like that. And that would improve performance overall. But part of the training or the particulars for this kit of memory, maybe, uh, I'm not sure, our, 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 our cast latency is 46, which is a little on the slow side for DDR5 5600. So I feel like that this could probably be improved if I fiddled with it a little bit more, but know that that's something that you're going to have to do if that's important to you you really don't have to do that. You, you'll get reasonable performance with the out of the box configuration. This is something that's a little bit self-inflicted because I've changed things. Also very impressive memory bandwidth, 80 gigabytes per second. Some AM5 desktops can't post performance that good. We also ran Geekbench GPU benchmarking with OpenCL 33,483. The iGPU on this is, is pretty solid. You could do light gaming, esports. I mean, just know that it is an iGPU, the Radeon 890M. It's going to perform like a Radeon A90M that's not power constrained. Now, AI performance, your AI companion. Can you run DeepSeek on this? Yes. I ran the DeepSeek 32 billion parameter model as well as the DeepSeek 7 billion parameter model using LM Studio. Now, this gives you the option in the GUI. When you load the model, you can tell it how many layers you want to run on the GPU and how many layers you want to run on the CPU. So I really had a lot of fun experimenting with this platform to find the right balance. You can see in Task Manager, as I pick different options, the CPU or the GPU will become more loaded. Depending on what you're doing, you may have a preference as to how this works. So suppose that you're building a developer workstation and you want Visual Studio Code. I would probably err on the side of having LM Studio do most of its computation, most of the layers, maybe not all of them, loaded onto the GPU, with most of the layers loaded on the GPU. The 30 billion parameter 
model is really just a little bit too slow and it's taking over 30 gigabytes of memory on our platform as you can see the temperatures are kept pretty well in check at 55 degrees c give or take that's that's really good for the cooling you can hear it cooling you can't hear it ramp up but physically because this machine is larger larger heat sink there's two fans one of those is really for the power supply but it works overall really well the at the wall power for our kilowatt Mm, spikes at around 120 watts, give or take, but most of the time it's under the 120 watt mark. It's really hovering around the 90 to 100 watt mark in most of the testing that I'm doing. And with the 7 billion parameter model, it's really zippy. It's surprisingly good. And the 7 billion parameter model really gets it done. So you could use Visual Studio Code, tie it in with the, with the Visual Studio Code plugin, connect it to this, and then start asking DeepSeek about your your, your terrible, awful Visual Studio Code plug-in type stuff. It's got 12 cores if you'd rather use the CPU for that. It does seem to run a little faster on the CPU side than it does on the Radeon 890M. There's not really a clean way to use the NPU for this. Theoretically, at some point in the future, like that 7 billion parameter model may have a path to acceleration using the NPU. But again, remember, the point of the NPU is not more performance. The point of the NPU is power savings. So any extra performance you get from running the NPU is because you're running the CPU, the GPU, and the NPU all at once to try to get this thing off the ground. The layer setting, that's basically what it's doing. So you, you, you don't have to put all the layers on the GPU. The layers can run on the CPU and the GPU. And because it's all on the same 96 gigs of memory, the you know, the GPU in this doesn't have its own memory. Um, you're basically constrained by the memory speed. The memory is really not all that fast in the context of GPUs and GPU compute. But I'm surprised that it is as good as it is. It's a lot of fun to play with the AI stuff. For everything else in terms of the rear port I.O. and rear port configuration, running two or three 4K displays off of this is not going to be any problem. For USB 4... I've got our trusty old Radeon 7. It's a Radeon 7 in a Cooler Master external Thunderbolt enclosure. Remember USB 4 is PCIe tunneling. Thunderbolt is also a PCIe tunneling technology. Can this be said to be Thunderbolt compatible? By and large, yes. And so this works fine on that. You don't have to put a GPU in here. You could put other things in here. Storage, things that need 20 gigabits of connectivity. Heck, you could do the uh, off-label uses and use them for networking on things like Proxmox. Thunderbolt networking is a thing. Thunderbolt networking is a thing. We've covered it since time immemorial. It's gotten a little better in the kernel because more people are using it because we've tried to tell people that it's, it's a thing. It can be a little sketchy, but it's less sketchy today than it was years ago. So overall, pretty good. Bottom line, this is the Minis Forum X1 AI. It is one of the most powerful Minis Forum machines that they've released that has USB 4 and has modern, you know, Zen 5 AI cores, has really the best cooling of any Minis Forum machine that I've taken a look at, has a working fingerprint sensor that's tied into AMD's ecosystem. There's really a lot to like on this platform. I wish that it had a little bit more for expansion. We do have that Oculink port, and I've got a special project coming up with this that's Oculink. Oculink, if you're not in the know, is PCIe Gen 4. We're gonna take that out to a PCIe slot and see how that works for us. Maybe a couple of Oculink ports or getting creative with some of that, I don't know. But the Dual 2280, I mean, you're really not wanting for a lot of expansion when we look at it and we look at what you can do with it and the fact that it's got a built-in microphone and fingerprint sensor. You could, you could really do a lot with that, I, I like it. Let's put a quick look at the X1 AI. If you have any projects you want me to try or a piece of software or something like that, let me know. I'm signing out and you can find me in the Level 1 forums. Yeah.